welcome to the video and thanks for stopping by. Ladies and gentlemen, the Infinite Warfare beta has officially come to an end. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about my opinions on the top five new things or the top five new introductions to Call of Duty. Before I begin, this was of course a beta, so all the things I talk about are subject to change um, by the full release of the game. Also, there are good things and bad things about the game, so expect a second video about the worst things. And lastly, these are just my opinion on the game and should not influence your thoughts but challenge them, so make sure to leave your responses down in the comment section down below. Okay, jumping into the juicy stuff, I wanted to start off with the big introduction introductions to the game and then finish off with the minor things. Starting off, there was a big chunk of new stuff put into the game in the quartermaster section of the game called prototype weapons. So instead of trying to use supply drops, they implemented this new way of collecting salvage points and allowing players to unlock a specific weapon they want instead of testing the luck of a supply drop and trying to just hunt and hunt and hunt for the weapon they wanted. This is way better than Treyarch's way of, as they said, earning supply drops where you could earn crypto keys and get supply drops, but you still weren't really trying or there was no real way you could get a weapon that you wanted. You'd still have to try and get a supply drop over and over and over again to try and get the weapon you wanted. It's a new way of collecting salvage points for unlocking a specific new weapon you want at increasing costs as the variant values go up is a very cool thing to the game. This also ties with the prototype weapons as our second topic here on the video called mission teams. The mission teams or factions are a brand new element that we have never seen in a COD game before. In the beta you were able to pick two teams. These teams would give you missions to complete, for example like two headshots or on a thousand points, which in turn gave you XP to level them up. And when you leveled up the team, you received a reward. You could receive a camo, a piece of gear, or or salvage points and you could also receive a certain prototype weapon. I'm definitely looking forward to trying the other two mission teams in the full release of the game. In the beta we only got to try the JTF Wolverines and the Orion Initiative but I'm definitely looking forward to using the Saber Team 7 and the Wraith. Especially the Saber Team 7 because uh, my name's in there and that's pretty cool. It's spelled a little differently but it's pronounced the same way. Moving into the third topic of the five new features in Call of Duty Infinite Warfare we have the energy weapons. Now we've seen energy weapons before in Call of Duty Advanced Warfare and in Black Ops 3 but not really like Infinite Warfare. In Infinite Warfare, the energy weapons are pretty much like normal weapons, but just have the ability to regenerate ammo, which is really helpful for when you're trying to get on that streak or trying to chase somebody. You don't have time to reload. You can just keep running and chasing after that person while your weapon's idling. Even if you have your secondary out, it'll start to regenerate ammo. So this definitely helps with conserving ammo and being fast in the game. I personally think these types of energy weapons are way better than Advanced Warfare's types of energy weapons because they would overheat and they really weren't that good. They were really bad weapons. They were slow. They didn't do a lot of damage. You couldn't really get kills with them. Um, most of the time, you just get outgunned by a regular assault rifle. In Infinite Warfare, they are pretty key to the game. Moving on to the fourth topic, which is the health bar. Now, this is probably my favorite new addition to Call of Duty. If you've never seen something like this before, and in-game, you're allowed to see how much health the enemy has. This I like because in gunfights, you know whether to challenge the person or to back off. It's also really good for esports, or if you're playing at a party, you're able to make calls really well and really accurately, because compared to old Call of Duty games, we didn't really know accurately how much health the enemy had. And the last last topic of the video today is the new hybrid weapon types. Now hybrid weapons are not a new concept in Call of Duty, but we've got new types of hybrid weapons like the EBR-800, which is a sniper and an assault rifle, or the Type 2, which is an assault rifle and a Kimbo SMGs. These are really useful because in older Call of Duty games, the hybrid weapons were never really good or supportive. They were also not very unique, and we can definitely be expecting more of these in future Call of Duty games and in DLC. And I wanted to throw in a little bonus item, I guess you can count it as a 6, but I really just want to count it as a bonus here, is the new kill streak or lethal animation. Now what I mean by this is when you call in a kill streak or use a lethal, it only takes one hand so your weapon is up and ready for a hit firing an enemy. This has really helped me in game, there's been a lot of situations where I've called in a counter UAV or a UAV and uh, I've been able to kill people because my gun is still ready available to hit fire somebody. Okay guys, that's all my thoughts on the top 5 new features in Call of Duty Infinite Warfare's beta. Let me know if I missed anything below and as always, leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe and be today so you're instantly notified more videos, and guys without well, further ado, we need to save them out. Peace.